we are opening up probably a little bit early in terms of uh, COVID-19 and the states are so keen to get going. I mean, we, we're behaving a bit as though this is over. It's not over. Just remember 1920 and the 1918 pandemic was the worst year because people kind of thought it was over. This has been a terrible year for deaths um, and it could get worse. But uh, we're not going to stay locked down forever. We just need to be realistic about what could happen. Probably there are two main risks of opening up because we've got so much Omicron already and people are well covered and well vaccinated. Two main risks are if there's a variant that appears overseas, it will come sooner than we've got before. But they always arrived here anyway. The second is that influenza uh, and other respiratory viruses could start coming in. One of the reasons we haven't had much influenza is that we've had closed borders and cir influenza circulates around the world. It circulates in Asia, goes up to the Northern Hemisphere, comes back to Asia and comes down to us. So we could see a flu outbreak, which uh, could be troublesome since we haven't had much flu uh, uh, in the last couple of mm. years. In terms of another variant then, there is this uh, BA2 sub variants out there. Yeah. How worried should we be about that? Well, it's, it's right, it is a sub-variant of the Omicron family. Um, look, the latest evidence, it's always, you know, we've had these repeated conversations as, as when new things arise. In the early days, you're never quite sure. But the early signs are that it is, you know, according to two, two bits of research mainly, one is that there is reasonable cross, re, what's called reactivity between BA1, which is the Omicron that we know, and BA2. In other words, you're partially covered against BA2 if you've had Omicron. You're also partially covered if you're vaccinated. It is a bit more immune evasive, but it is more contagious in its own right. So it's more contagious, a little bit more immune evasive, which is why you're seeing it growing in some countries. Mm. But the, particularly the Danes who've got a lot of experience of it say it's not more severe. So it's, it's got about the same level of severity as BA1. So probably what we'll see is it, it coming in, we might see a second surge of Omicron due to BA2 at a smaller level, but probably proportionately speaking, no more severe. That's what the current evidence suggests. Okay. People coming in from overseas and they have to be double vaxxed. Should they be triple vaxxed though? Should yeah, they have a booster? Probably, and, uh, you, and, a, and a significant proportion of people coming in will not have had Pfizer, Moderna, or Astra, or Johnson, Johnson. Some of them will have had And we don't know when they've had that second yeah, jab as well. Yeah, that's right. And they'll, they'll have had coronavac, perhaps the Chinese vaccine or the Russian vaccine, which are not as effective. And so third, third doses uh, probably should have been insisted on uh, just to give us a bit more coverage and also to prevent people landing in hospital if they catch it here. Mm. WA is due to open up in early March. Are they in a good spot to, to do that now? Well, they're, unlike uh, New South Wales, they're closing down a bit ahead of the surge. So they're, they're already in, in exponential growth from, into, from local cases. So they're growing quite fast. Um, they're, they're probably a little bit late, but they're putting in mask mandates and other things like that, uh, um, more separation in, in, in indoor environments. And that's the right thing to do at this point when you're seeing a bigger surge coming. They could probably have done that last week but at least they're doing it now. So they'll have some more controls in place when they do open up their borders to keep a bit of a break on it.